We have a super special extra guest today. Isaac is here. Isaac, you're 19, right? Yes, You're I in am. college. Joanna's darling son. Uh, Hannah has agreed to do, like, just give us a taste for what it's like when you're counseling uh, a teenager like like Isaac. So I'm going to just turn it over to you, Hannah. Sure. Uh, so Isaac, basically, uh, do you know what I do? That's the first thing. No. Okay, cool. So basically what I do is I ask a bunch of questions and then I do a bunch of work for people your age to help them figure out what types of jobs get them what they want in life and then what to learn to do those things. So I actually, I don't necessarily counsel. I more work, I would just work for you. That's how it works actually. So my job is to just ask you questions and then I go do a bunch of research for you. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to ask you a couple shortened questions of what I usually ask. And some of them are a little tough because I'm cutting you to the end. Normally, I start with easier questions and they get progressively harder. Uh, so what are you what are you in school for now? Um, currently, I am an exercise science major in my four year program and then I'm going to a three year graduate program for physical therapy or sports medicine. OK, OK, cool. So basically, I'm going to start based on that. Um, I'm going to start asking you a soft. I'm going to start with an easy question. Uh, the first one is if you could wake up tomorrow and you could master any three skills or hobbies immediately, things that you think are cool, things that bring you joy, or things that you think could make you money or income, what would those three things be? Um, uh, I'm going to start with I'm going to finish mastering the guitar because I've put in four and a half to five years in that already. And if I could speed up that process, it would help my music career a bunch. I don't want a career in it. It's, I think it's just a fun hobby, but I think it'd be good. Um, maybe next I'd master my javelin because I'm a javelin thrower at my school and I'm really bad at it right now. And I need to get a lot better at it so I can, you know, go to go to state and all of that for for uh, for Division three. And then um, I don't think you, that's, there's a skill of making money. I think that you. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Like getting right into the career earlier. Hey, mom, you're not allowed to chime in. <laughs> hey, mom, you're being like me. We could do stocks. The, the, yeah. the skill Trading of gambling stocks. with stocks. That'd be pretty yeah. cool. Or That's... can I do the skill of blackjack? Absolutely. I think that would also work pretty well. There's no wrong answers. And if you had that skill to count cards, then yeah, you could make a lot of money doing that. Yeah. So you really javelin, could. Javelin, blackjack, and a guitar. Those are the three. Yeah. That's yeah. perfect. Okay. All right. And then uh, I'm going to ask you a couple more. I'm a couple more. You, ha, you're, you're good? You're good for a couple more? Oh, yeah. I'm good. Okay. Cool. All right. Thanks for being willing to do this, too, because normally this is uh, this is all one-on-one, -on -one, so he's doing, a, he's doing a good job. Oh, yeah. Of course. Okay. This one's a little harder. You may have to think about this, but if you could try a job for a day, and I'm going to preface this with any job in the whole world. So you could be the pilot that flies people out to the Antarctic substations, or you could be an elephant trainer, or you could be the guy at SpaceX that presses the buttons that sets off the rockets. I've also gotten answers like nurse or teacher because people would like to try those jobs for a day, but they don't necessarily want to become one. So is there any job that you want to try for one day that you're interested in? You know, thinking about it, I feel like I'm really curious about how miserable a job being a chemist would be because I, I, I think it seems a lot of fun, but now that I've taken a lot of those classes, I'm wondering if it's as fun as like being in those classes are because they're not fun. But I feel like the people in those jobs like chalk it up to being a lot of fun. And I feel like it would dissuade a lot of my ideas about, you know, career paths. And it's just like, oh, well, these people truly have something wrong with them and they love them they love it so much that it like makes them want to do it what do you think you know it's, you think it's big chemistry trying to market to you and, and make it seem like it's fun <laughs> no i think that it's i think you would like reinforce the idea that there's just something for everybody and i feel like there's a lot of nicheness and jobs and it would keep them from it would keep me from like i don't know thinking that i could do anything because I feel like there's a job for me that would be that's like perfect. And oh. I feel like if, I feel like if I say like, oh, I could do anything, I feel like that's not exactly accurate because I could not do a lot of things. And I think seeing that, because I, I know that I'm, I have a skill in writing because I'm it's very easy for me, but I hate it a lot. I can't stand writing. I'd rather be doing anything else. 
so I know like I feel like if I saw someone do that job and like could do that job for a day I feel like it would like help me feel like oh if I find something that I enjoy it really helped me like understand why I love to do it because if I do a job that I hate I understand why I hate it that was one of the most thorough answers I have ever gotten to that question because I usually have to ask why afterwards but you explain the why very well and very thoroughly nice job and process this of elimination, what you don't want to do, right? Yes. And I always say ruling out is more important than ruling in. So last question. This is the hard one. It's four questions. You game? Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So usually what I ask, and this is not the final thing. It's one of the things I ask. So, uh, and feel free to answer this question however you want. But if you fast forward 15 years into the future, that would put you at, uh, what? I don't make me do math in public. How old would you be in 15 years? <laughs> Um, I'd be 34. 30, 34, right? Can you picture it in your mind? I hope. I, th um, <laughs> I think you're right. So if you're 34, what does your family life look like? Who's there? Where do you live? What do you live in? Do you have dogs, cats, llamas? No, uh, I, hate, I hate these questions. I know. Because. Usually there's a lot more lead up to this one. I don't usually ask it three questions. <laughs> oh, I bet. <laughs> you're being a good, you're going to, you're being a good sport though. Um, oof. I, I don't know. I, I truly still see myself as like where I am now. It's hard to say like, cause I, I'm definitely going to change when I'm 34 to an, a lot of extent, but. To the extent I am now, I would imagine myself, I don't know, focusing on my career in a two-bedroom house. For, where is which that? Is, which, is, which is what I want right now. That sounds very nice to me. That but does I, sound that's definitely not gonna what, what I'm going to want in two, three, four years. So I, I leave that open. Okay. That's pretty good. Do you know, and this is the last thing I'll do, um, do you know where you want to live after you graduate? Oh, Washington. Oh, I love it there. That's where I'm going to college. I love it. Okay. Because the I don't weather. care where. Yeah. The weather's, I love it. Do you know what sort of income you want to try to make when you get out of school? Or what what type of income would you like? That's actually a better, that's a better question. Let's ask it like that instead. I'm trying to calibrate um, for you specifically. 100K or above. That's all I can really hope for. And then do you know what type of schedule? schedule um yeah like if you could design the type of schedule you have in a week when would you work right because we all got to work so when would you work if you could pick um weekdays so if i had to monday through friday if i could choose though i do monday thursday and then maybe three days off that sounds nice I, I like to keep busy but i feel like once i get too busy i want like a three-day vacation really badly so i know you do I'm a lot of living to in to work I don't have to come into work on weekends sometimes. That's what I have to do now. So, I mean, if I could choose, like, on my on my less busy weeks, I'd have a three day weekend. That'd be nice. That three day three day work weeks or four day work weeks in that uh, three days, you can do a lot of living in three days. And then my last question is, what is your ideal work environment? Do you want to work from home? Do you want to work with other people? Do you want to be able to have the option to work in an office or or with other people, and then sometimes the option to work alone? Yeah, I I learned this because with my job, I had the option to work from home and then I had to work in my offices as well. Um, working from home seems awesome as you have to actually do the work and you end up not doing it and you know, doing anything else but work until you're like, it's the, the last minute. If I force myself to drive 45 minutes to the offices and get the work done there, I'm still, I mean, I'm still alone in the offices, but you know, my, my boss comes in sometimes and she, uh, and we'll talk. It's kind of nice there because it's like, I know I have to do the work. There's nothing else to do, but stare at the printer while I do my printing. So I definitely choose to go work in an office, but maybe it'd be nice to have it close to my house. And then if it's like, if I don't have any work to do, or like if it's something that I truly could get done in like an hour or two hours, I don't want to be forced to stay there because then I would get resentful for sure. Yep. Yep. So that's basically, those are my questions. And you did a really good job on the spot with no lead up because that's tough. Those are tough questions to answer with no, with no lead up to them. 
So thank you, Isaac. I appreciate that. So basically what I do is like I take those um, those criteria that you just gave me, your location, your income, your schedule, and then if you had to prioritize them in terms of which one was the most important to you, which one would you say is number one? Probably say where I live. Another reason for that is that I can probably be happy anywhere as long as I have like certain friends or the right environment. No, that's really important. A lot of people don't think about that actually. What'd you say is number two? Money. Mm -hmm. And then three and four, if you had to pick. I'd probably say work schedule comes third and then work environment. No, I'd say work environment comes third and then work schedule comes fourth. Mm -hmm. Cool. Good job. Thanks. It. Yeah. <laughs> and then so Hannah, would you normally then take, uh, based on that, and I realized, and by the way, thanks and props to you. Put it, we put you on the spot to do this really compressed exercise. But I That's presume tough, that this would get um, normally um, done in an, just a, an expanded way. And you would start to work with your, your clients, parents, and then their, their uh, teen and young adult kids to say, okay, here are some jobs that could match these. I mean, are you actually doing so, that research or, or how does that work? Yeah. So what everybody just saw was a very condensed part of one part of the first part of my process, which is a four part process. It's the initial kickoff. It's the foundation. And then the rest of the process builds on itself. So, and I'll tell Isaac how this usually works. So basically what I do is I usually take all of that stuff and then I go do a ton of research. I look nationally, I look locally, I look anywhere that you want to live and I find, and remote work too, if that fits your criteria. And then I give you a giant list of jobs, most of which you've probably never heard of in your life. And then I just have you go through and eliminate the ones you don't like. That's all you got to do. All you have to do, no homework, no nothing. Just cut the ones you don't like and then tell me why. And then after that, I go out and I take the jobs that made the cut to the third call and that's the skill stack analysis. So what I do is, again, local national analysis of jobs that that are for that specific thing. I always ignore degree requirements because they are, in, unless it is legally required, because if it is not a legal requirement, it is a request and it can be ignored and it should be all the time because you never know who people are going to hire. Companies don't hire people that look like the job descriptions. So then I go out and I look at the actual skills. So I look at the most in-demand skills across all of the jobs that I can find for that specific thing, especially, and I do focus on location if, if someone has to work in a fixed location. Because like Isaac, that'd be number one, right? So you look for jobs in Washington that fit those criteria according to the ones he narrowed from his previous vocational creativity list. And then after I do that, um, I say, hey, this is these are the skills you need to learn. This is any relevant legal licenses or certifications. And then if they do require a degree, because I don't, I don't not do those things. I just make sure that they have a fully informed idea of what's going to be required of them. So then I tell them how long it's going to take. And then they eliminate based on level of interest in learning the skills. And then also the amount of time it's going to take them to get to be able to to be hired in their first job doing that. And then after that, I make a career curriculum. So I explain, I'll find resources, I find courses, I find specific schools even, depending on what it is, like midwife apprenticeship programs, or like I said, the, a watchmaker institute, or a coding boot camp. I just put a kid into a MIT, uh, or sorry, not MIT, but a, it was based in California, but there's a there's a machine learning boot camp that he's going to go to. He's going to go a cloud direction and, you know, costs a fraction of what they would have paid for one year of college. But that was his end result. But we based that on the fact that he wanted remote work and he wanted to make over a certain amount of money. And then you optimize for those things. And then you just lay out a clear path to get the skills that they need. 